Hi, this is Yavan Matyushenko with Ukraine Forum, and you're watching our weekly recap of the latest news in the heart of Ukraine. Vladimir Putin used a non-explicit part of an old R-rated limerick in a comment referring to Ukraine's obligation to fulfill the Minsk agreements in a way Russia interprets them. The jingle brings up sexual assault connotations from the Sleeping Beauty tale. Putin said, quote, Whether you like it or not, tough it out, my beautiful girl. What kind of rape diplomacy is that? Apparently unhappy with such an aggressive remark, Zelensky snapped at Putin when asked to comment on the issue. Ukraine sure is beautiful, but to say it's yours is just too much. BAM! What the Russian leader keeps insisting on is that Ukraine talk directly with representatives of the unrecognized entities that emerged in parts of Donetsk and Luhansk regions with what Ukraine has repeatedly stated was direct support and supervision on the part of Moscow. Meanwhile, one of Ukraine's major red lines is we do not negotiate with Russian proxy forces. May we please have adults in the room? Speaking of Minsk agreements, US diplomats in Kyiv underlined the fact that Russia is pushing a distorted interpretation of the deal, including insisting on autonomy for Moscow-controlled Donbass. Nowhere in the Minsk agreements is the word autonomy mentioned, the US embassy tweeted. The advisors to the Normandy Four leaders met in Berlin on Thursday. The meeting saw no breakthroughs as no documents were signed after more than eight hours of talks. The head of the president's office, Andriy Yermak, said the parties agreed that the Minsk Accords must be implemented. Now the main stumbling block is the sequence of steps laid down in the deal. French President Emmanuel Macron visited Kyiv this week the next day after meeting President Putin in Moscow. While in Ukraine, the French leader refuted media reports by Le Figaro and Le Monde, claiming he had discussed with his Russian counterpart the prospects of Ukraine's Finlandization, read neutral status beyond security blocks. In turn, Zelensky also said he never heard of the idea being brought up. We are not offering anyone Ukrainization, are we? said Zelensky. Had anyone discussed this or not, one thing is clear. Finlandization won't work for Ukraine. This would untie Russia's hands in many respects. And so, taking this into account, we don't want to get finished. A Ukrainian expert with the anti-corruption action center, Darya Kalinyuk, took to Twitter, suggesting that Macron, who is seeking to find solutions to the crisis triggered by Putin, consider an asset freeze targeting Russian oligarchs. It turns out, Roman Abramovich, Valentin Yumashev, Boris and Arkady Rodenbergs, Oleg Deripaska, Alexander Ponomarenko, Gennady Timchenko and many others have plenty of those across France. So when Putin arrogantly bullies journalists with a question whether France wants war with Russia, Daria suggests he asks his close friends if they're ready to lose all they have in France and other NATO allies. The Czech Foreign Minister Jan Lipovsky, who visited Kyiv this week, made a valid point as regards Russia's security ultimatums. These demands are absolutely not the way to run talks. Speaking in Kyiv alongside his counterparts from Austria and Slovakia, the Czech top diplomat said the countries of the Slavkov trilateral firmly stand with Ukraine in its confrontation with Russia. The security of Ukraine is security of the entire Europe, he said. Alexander Lukashenko, the man who refers to himself as Belarus president, this week went on a verbiage spree, apparently trying to flex muscles after reportedly being told in Moscow to postpone his ski vacation in Kazakhstan and remain in the country to observe the joint Russian-Belarusian military exercises. So, when reflecting on a possible war with Ukraine, Lukashenko claimed Ukraine wouldn't last three to four days. He went even further in his fantasizing, claiming the CSTO security bloc has proved their troops would already be standing in the La Manche before NATO even manages to redeploy its response force. Well, what can I say? 
everyone must remember from school years a typical arrogant kid who would bully his peers while having an older, buff-looking friend behind his back. That's exactly what this looks like. Chill out, Mr. Lukashenko. You're not in a position to tell anyone of your military resolve while your own country is being absorbed by your neighbor, while you're doing nothing just to stay in the top office. This won't last long, trust me. There can only be one Tsar in Russia, and he doesn't have mustache, as I recall. Does he? As Mr. Lukashenko threatened to sever fuel and energy supplies to Ukraine in case of a clash with Russia, and as Mr. Putin has no plans to stop using energy as a weapon, the United States and the European Union will work to strengthen Ukraine's energy resilience, says Joseph Borrell, high representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. Together with the US, we oppose the use of energy supply as a weapon and geopolitical lever, Borrell said, referring to Russia's recent behavior on the gas market as the prices for European consumers have skyrocketed amid growing tensions with Russia and while certification of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline is still underway. Russia has declared large areas of the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea unsafe for navigation February 13th through 19th due to military exercises involving missile and artillery fire. Russia is virtually preventing freedom of navigation to Ukrainian ports. This is clearly a violation of the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. As the crisis takes up much of everyone's airtime these days, certain news from Ukraine are just nice, you know. So, on a light note. Ukrainian movie director and former Kremlin prisoner Oleg Sentsov this week shared some exciting news. Netflix has acquired streaming rights to his latest feature film, Rhino. Premiered last year, the film has already claimed international awards, winning the Best Picture and Best Actor nominations at the Stockholm International Film Festival. Also, a Danish-Swedish-Ukrainian documentary, A House Made of Splinters, by Danish director Simon Lorang Wilmont, was recognized at the Göteborg Film Festival. The film, telling a story of a children's home in eastern Ukraine, earlier won Sundance World Cinema Documentary Best Director Award. I hope many more Ukrainian film directors and actors will become real international stars and shine bright in the global movie industry. Speaking of stars, this week we mark the 116th anniversary of the internationally acclaimed aviation designer Oleg Antonov. It is his Kyiv-based bureau that manufactured the world's largest cargo plane, Mriya, which is dream in Ukrainian. Meanwhile, our biggest dream here in Ukraine is that we don't get engulfed by a flow of worrying news from the front line and just across our border with Russia, and rather enjoy stories on new art projects innovative technology and economic breakthroughs. Stay tuned, we will get back to you at the end of next week with a recap of the latest news. This is Ukraine Forum in the heart of Ukraine.